Hello, precious mamas and mamas to be. Welcome to my mind opening interview series with important authorities in the birth world. This is your host, Ilka B, with the Liberated Birth Movement, broadcasting from around the world. In this interview series, we're going to once again uncover myths, ask interesting questions, and get out of the box answers. Hello, precious ladies and mamas. I am hella excited to have a celebrity on today, Jackie Blue. She is a filmmaker of Beautiful Births documentary. Is that right? Welcome. Welcome to my interview series. Um, I'm super excited to have you tonight and to talk about some really cool things. Um, one of them is we're going to talk about your own um, four different birth experiences and how you got into this whole world of making an amazing film. So please uh, welcome and tell me a little bit about uh, your background and how you became a, a birth filmmaker and a birth expert. Well, I've, I've, first of all, thank you so much for having me and for taking the time to talk with me. Oh. Uh, and secondly, I've always been fascinated by the human condition in general. Just I believe that our brains are the best computers we have. I believe that the human body is intelligent by design. And mm -hmm. when I was very young, when I was in elementary school, uh, remember those biology books, like the science books? And they would always have the pictures of the growing fetuses. Totally. To me, that was the most fascinating thing. I couldn't, I couldn't get enough of that. Just even Ooh. as a young child, I thought that was so interesting. So, and then when I was a kid, I also remembered hearing about Russia doing these experiments with water birth. And I thought that was really cool. So I knew from a young age, one day I'm going to be a mom. One day I want to have a water birth. Oh, wow. And that was just, I was a young child. And then when I got pregnant for the first time, I got pregnant with twins. And immediately the idea of water birth was off the table. My doctor shut it down immediately and said, no, even if you're lucky enough to have a vaginal birth, we need to monitor. And so there was all sorts of, that wasn't going to happen. Um, and then with my second, second pregnancy, which was my first VBAC and my third child, um, I really wanted to have a water birth. And I was told, because I was a VBAC, uh, first of all, there was a lot of controversy in even having a vaginal birth after a C-section. There's a lot of doctors who don't want to. When was that? So that was 2005. Okay. Um, I had to be back in 2005. It's crazy. Um, it's still a concern. Yeah. It's, it was, it was, I had a tough time. And fortunately, my doctor um, was supporting it. And then I moved. Uh, I had a doctor in Florida who supported it. And then because of the economy and everything, we moved to Indiana for a year. Um, and in Indiana, we had, I was able to have a midwife, but it was a certified nurse midwife. When I told her I didn't want an epidural because I wanted, I basically did a lot of research, so I'll, I'll backtrack. I did a lot of research. I became obsessed with, I don't want to have another C-section. Wow. The recovery was really hard. Um, and I knew that, well, I have two toddlers that are very active and they run around all the time. I oh could not God. imagine taking care of a newborn, recovering from a C-section and having two toddlers that climbed on me all the time. So totally. So I really did all my research on how can I avoid a C-section, and I knew that having an epidural could lead me to having another C-section. So I knew I didn't want that. And when I went in and I told this to the nurse midwife, I said, you know, I don't want an epidural. I don't want Pitocin. I want to let everything happen naturally. And her response was, don't be a hero. You don't, no. you're, you're going to get, and, wow. and I was just, put off by that because I was like, wait a second, you're a midwife. You're supposed to encourage me to go natural. What are you doing? Totally. I felt really, so I was really disheartened by that situation. I thought, you know, that's not, but so I had a, a scary pregnancy with that woman being my care provider. But then um, I was really lucky in when I went into labor at the hospital, once they saw I had like a four page birth plan, I went ridiculous. <laughs> this birth plan. woman came prepared, back off. <laughs> I was, I knew exactly what I wanted, what I didn't, why I had, I I had done so much that I was just so like militant, like I was not going to accept anything else. And so I went in with this birth plan and they looked at my birth plan and, and they kind of rolled their eyes and, but yeah. This is where 
magic came in, they gave me a labor and delivery nurse who happened to be a doula. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we're, we were in India, wow, the universe. Time, I don't know if you know. Yeah, it was, that was amazing because Indiana does not have wonderful birth walks. You're not allowed to do home birth in Indiana. They don't have any freestanding birth centers. And this was back in 2005. I thought they're behind the times. You know, every other state has, most every other state has uh, more liberal birth laws than, than Indiana. Um, so I was really which is, lucky. Which is so uh, like exciting to talk about anyway, because it's like, who doesn't allow me to have my baby at home, right? That's like a whole other question to go, go into, but please continue. Right. Yeah. Well, that was one of the reasons when I was considering uh, becoming a doula and a midwife that I knew if I want to do this, I can't live in Indiana because there the laws there were way too rigid. Um, so I, I got really lucky with having that woman be my labor and delivery nurse. She took great care of me. She knew exactly what I wanted. She joked and said, and I don't know that she, I don't know how much joking she was doing, but she joked and said that she was the, um, the underground railroad doula helping all the women who wanted to have natural births have the natural births but you know because in wow. it was hard in that state so yeah um, I got lucky with her I had a wonderful VBAC the terrible nurse midwife didn't come in until it was literally time to catch the baby so I didn't have her harassing me or trying to push <laughs> up a terrible nurse midwife. oh my god I'm so sorry you had to experience yeah. that I called her we called her um, I affectionately called call her a medwife because she was very, very much against me going natural and very much pushing the medical side of it. Um, so she was a medwife. <laughs> um, but, but then I moved back to Florida and I had my next baby. It was a year later. This was, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it was uh, October 2005 in Indiana. And then October 2006, I was pregnant again and having my other baby. So this was baby number four, my third pregnancy and my second VBAC. And that experience was completely different. Um, this was with a doctor who claimed to be supportive of natural birth, claimed to be supportive of VBAC, uh, up until the moment I was actually in labor. Oh and God. when I was actually in labor, he was threatening me with a C-section. If you have your baby by this time, we're cutting you. Um, Left and right, I was fighting. I was fighting with the nurses the whole time of, no, you're not giving me Pitocin. No, I don't consent to this. Um, mm -hmm. there, was, there was a lot that I was not consenting to during that. And I, had to, I felt like I had to fight for my right just to have my baby. Um, mm -hmm. And I kept telling them I was going to walk out against medical advice. Um, I said, I told the nurses, you know, at one point I was like, you don't need to do anything but catch the baby and cut the cord. And really, I don't even need you to do that. Um, I told them I'm just here because of legalities, because I have to have my baby in a hospital by law because it's a VBAC. That's the only reason I'm here. And then fortunately for me, by the time I had my last baby, the law changed. And VBAC could be under the care of a midwife, and VBACs could have home birth. Um, so by the time I had my next baby, two years later, um, this was 2008. I had my last baby in a freestanding birth center in Hollywood, Florida, and I had him in water by candlelight with music. So I finally got to have that water birth that I wanted ever since I was a young child. Wow. And it really, really was the birth of my dreams. And it was during that experience that I realized I want to to help other women have the kind of births that I just had. I want there to be no fear. I want there to be no pressure. Um, I want there, I want it to be their birth, you know, because that's what I that's what I realized was so special about it. It was my birth. It was how I wanted it. It was with the people I wanted there, the music that I hand selected. Um, and it was the most, to me, I felt like it was the most spiritual experience of my life the most beautiful experience of my life. And if I could go back and do it again, I don't want to have any more kids, but if I was ever going to, that's the only way, the only way I would do it. Um, mm. And it was such a... Yeah. <laughs> so uh, during that yeah. time, I decided... Thank you for you know, sharing this. Maybe I want to... Yeah, thank you for letting me. It's um, Because in all the talks I've done about the documentary, I don't really, I haven't really talked a whole lot about what my experiences have been and, totally. and um, 
on the documentary, she and I are making a book version of our film right now. And I think that's where she and I are both going to write our own personal experiences and what led us to being passionate about birth. Because I don't, I don't know that anyone necessarily becomes passionate about it until they experience it. Like you might be interested, you might be curious, but once you become pregnant, that's when I think the real passion really kicks in, the interest, the curiosity, the how and why of what's going on in the body. And I, I was fascinated. Yes. You know, I felt like I am my own science experiment right now. <laughs> no, I feel you. I totally feel you. I actually walked out of the shower earlier. I'm 21 weeks today. And I was like, oh my God, there is a alien crowing inside of me. My belly is just getting bigger every day. It's like, it's so fascinating to just like go through this experience. It's truly it's, it is a science experience. You're totally right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so magical at the same time. Like, it's such a, I don't know how to put it into words. You just kind of have to feel it, you know. And, um, and that's what was so special to me with, with having birth, with giving birth naturally, was I was able to experience the oxytocin. And there's nothing like that. Um, and unfortunately, when you have the epidural, it does shut that off. And you don't feel that you don't experience. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about that moment when you held your baby in your arms and you said, "Oh my God, this is the exact experience how I always wanted it." Like, tell me how you actually felt. Like, in and maybe if you can compare it to the other experiences before, like, what was the biggest difference? And what was the biggest difference that you know, like, made you to have that experience? Um, that's a great question. The the immediate feelings when my baby first came out, um, well, it was really a beautiful thing because I had him by candlelight. So there were candles going. I felt like I was in a spa. Uh, my husband was sitting in the tub behind me. So it was for a very some reason, For some reason, I can't see you right now. Maybe you have to talk a little louder so that the, the camera is catching on. Otherwise, people are going to see me and they hear you talk. <laughs> okay. Is that better? I just moved the camera a little closer. Yeah? Okay. Perfect. Um, yes. Yeah, so with the, when the baby came out, uh, when he was actually born, um, when he was, let me figure out how to word this. When he actually was brought earthside, mm -hmm. um, I was in, a, in water, there were candles going and the song, just like heaven by the cure was playing in the background. So he was born as that song was playing. Um, and when he came out, there was an immediate, oxytocin release of just emotion um the way that people cry at a wedding the uncontrollable tears of just pure love emotion that's what i felt surging through me mm -hmm. um my husband was sitting behind me in the tub when the baby was born so he got to see the birth from the same angle that i saw which was really cool oh my, my god, you're making me cry right now honestly <laughs> keep on talking so oh my that's, god <laughs> that's oh. the reaction i still have when i it's, it's funny, my, my best friend in, in Ocala, her name is Jackie Corpola. She's of Starry Eyes Photography, and she did most of the images that came from my movie came from her. Um, we've been best friends since we were 16. And yeah. at the same time that I decided I wanted to make a documentary, she had got into being a birth photographer. So it just serendipitously worked out in the universe that we would be working together to make this movie happen. Um, and when, when she would send me photos and I would be looking through the images, I'm bawling. I'm reading these birth stories. I'm just bawling. It's such a, I think it triggers the oxytocin in my brain and those feelings come rushing back. So when I watch a beautiful birth story on TV or in a movie or on YouTube, or I hear someone talking about their experience, it does trigger my own oxytocin and I feel those feelings come up and I cry and it's a good cry. Mm -hmm. But I love it. Um, and that's what I love about birth. Even, you know, my youngest is going to be 10. And I still love birth stories. And I still can't get enough of hearing women and seeing the glow of them talk about their experiences. It's, there's something that's still magical about it all these years later. Wow. See, I, I actually truly believe that this is an experience that stays with a woman for the rest of her life. I remember my OBGYN that I had years back. Um, uh, she 
when she heard first that I became a doula, um, she literally all of a sudden, and usually it was like, you know, 15, 20 minutes appointments, right? We took an entire hour. She was like 62 years old and she told me her like three birth stories back to back, all excited because she never really had anyone or never had an outlet to actually talk about these things, right? So you, like, there is something about this experience that stays with a woman forever. And it's, so amazing you know to hear your story and it's it touches me on such a deep level and it makes me cry um to know that you know you had this wonderful experience and then at the other hand there's you know it can literally be a terrible traumatizing experience that like you know triggers all your most negative terrible feelings also for the rest of your life right it's like i think that's something that we're not understanding in our society that this birth experience that a woman has is not just the baby's one and only you know entrance into into this earth into this world but it's also like an experience for a mother that can literally change the trajectory of her life for you know for that forever and for better or for worse, right? Yeah. So to hear your story is really encouraging. I had a, you know, a few interviews in the last uh, couple of weeks um, where we talked about the birth drama that women go through and sometimes abuse and mistreatment. So um, thank you for sharing a really beautiful and wonderful experience. And please let us know how... How did, you, how did you get to have that? What did you overcome in yourself? You said you got a little obsessed and you researched and you learned everything and you just saw yourself as an amazing like science experience. What else? Tell us more about it. So for me, it was a fear and having to remove that was a big thing for me because when I first Can you go a little closer? Sorry. <laughs> so fear was a big thing for me and learning how to let go of that was really, mm -hmm. mm, really important for me in order to move past the idea of, can I do this? Mm -hmm. And to the idea of, yes, I got this. Um, because at first, when I first got pregnant with the twins, I was young, I was 21. Uh, I didn't know a whole lot. I hadn't gone through, I hadn't gone through birth yet the only thing I really had was my mom telling me what she went through and and my mom had this scary story and and my grandmother had scary stories and my aunt had a scare and everybody around me seemed to have these really scary birth stories um, and then I knew I knew because I was having twins that there was a high chance of me having surgery and that terrified me mm. just the idea of surgery alone was scary so it was like, okay, I'm pregnant, but can I just stay pregnant now? Because wow. the idea of these babies had is more scary than anything else I'd ever had to go through up to mm -hmm. that point. Um, and then when, when it came down to it, the doctor, I think, instilled more fear in me in the hospital when he was telling me, if I don't have a C-section right now, one of my babies could die. Um, I later found out which from another is bullying right there. Yeah, exactly. And well, I found out a few years later, um, my midwife that I had for my last baby, she actually worked with a doctor and, and I had to see this doctor for clearance um, because anyone who was a VBAC had to see the doctor for clearance. That's the legitimacy of it. So, um, so I had to go do that. And this doctor, she was so wonderful. I wish I had known her when I had my twins because she told me she delivers twins all the time and she never does a c-section she manually turns the baby and she's never lost a baby to death so when i found that out i was kind of mad at my ob but what was i going to do it was you know four years too late at that point so right. um but that's when i start encouraging women to do their own research and not only research the subject of pregnancy but research your doctor mm -hmm. and look at their track record and what is their what is their maternal death rate? How many babies or mothers have they lost? I don't think these are things people think about when they're choosing oh, a care provider. No, they don't. And unfortunately, your care provider doesn't have to be transparent with you about it either. They don't have to tell you right away like, oh, my C-section rate is 75% uh, or whatever. So many mamas and babies die, right? They don't have to tell you that. If they would have, I think like women would make different different decisions about it too. And 
the care provider and the setting is something that is so amazingly important in you know how your birth is gonna um, end up going sure yeah absolutely I think environment is really huge um, like with your and this is where we're hypnobirth and and uh, I feel like because because I study um, I'm a hypnotherapist, so and I'm certified in hypnosis for childbirth. And based on my own experiences with childbirth, what I learned, my own practicing of hypnosis when I was in my last uh, my last birth and, and experience, um, it really triggers the the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And I feel like if you're in a safe environment where you feel safe, whether if you're the type of person who feels safe in a hospital, then you should be in a hospital. But if you're the type of person who feels safe at home, then you should be at home. Because mentally, and, and this happens at a subconscious level, and I don't think people realize this, but our, our fears and our, are already programmed in us. Um, and so if we have a natural fear of the doctor or the hospital, being in a, in a hospital setting is going to trigger some fears, even on a subconscious really? level. Totally. So, and so many of us have these experiences, even though we might not be aware of it. Just like, you know, as a kid going and get a vaccine is like for most kids, not like what we really wanted to do. So there are these first things that are triggered and these connections made. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. And that, that all happens at a subconscious level. I mean, until I started studying hypnotherapy in the subconscious mind, I wasn't even aware of this. Um, and, and so one of the things that I like to do is to really kind of help people to understand this um, because the parasympathetic nervous system is going to release the oxytocin and help everything run smoothly. But then at the first mental or physical perceived uh, threat or, or thought of danger, your sympathetic nervous system comes in. And, and what's going to happen then is you're not going to go to fight or flight. You're going to go to freeze. And that's going to cause your whole labor system to close down and stop. So if you ever hear the stories of women who are in labor, everything's going fine, and then labor just stops. And then there's failure to progress, and they have to bring in all these interventions. That's, that's what's going on. It's the subconscious mind has been triggered with a fear response. And, and so the parasympathetic nervous system stops. The sympathetic nervous system kicks in. And then we have this huge fear that can paralyze us and, and even stop labor altogether. So I think that environment, if you're in a safe environment with people that you trust, mm -hmm. and that's what I really feel like having trust, having people around you that you trust, mm -hmm. being in an environment where you feel safe, and then understanding and trusting your body and going through positive affirmations and having a loving, supporting care system, um, that really helped me a lot. And I think that makes all the difference for whether you're going to have a positive or a negative because things can sometimes happen in nature uh, and scary things can happen. But if you're in a relaxed, positive state of mind to begin with, you're going to be able to handle whatever comes up and whatever happens. But if you're panicked, that's all you're going to, you're just going to be in a panicked state of mind. You're not going to be able to handle whatever happens. And um, and then, you know, and that's not saying that negative things are going to happen. It's just with nature, you never know. Totally. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for that. And, you know, it's uh, what you said earlier, like we're kind of set up to, um, you know, um, our like fears are getting triggered, right? So we can like also learn this in a positive way. So we can trigger ourselves, you know, and this is, I believe, what you do with hypnosis, right? And what in my, you know, practice most of the time with the, you know, uh, focusing on the breath, is like whenever something gets stressful, whenever something gets really tense, like I just need to freaking slow down and be in the present moment, close my eyes and take a few deep breaths and then the, the nervous system actually does slow down and we can trigger ourselves to react calm instead of freaking out. So that is really, um, yeah, that's, that's really uh, amazing to know about our bodies, like how adaptable they actually are in either direction, right? However we want to train them. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm really fascinated with the human condition, both mentally and physically. I think that the mind, uh, it's an incredible tool. I think that it's very powerful and we can program our mind for better or for worse. We can program it with fearful thoughts mm -hmm. or with loving thoughts. 
And, and those are really the two primary emotions that everything is based in either fear or love. So when you're angry or you're jealous or, you know, you have these negative feelings going on, those are all the fear-based emotions. And then we have our positive loving emotions. And so for me, when I was, um, when I was pregnant and my, my ex-husband laughed at me when I was getting ready for the last baby because, you know, it was the middle of the night and everybody's sleeping and I woke him up and said, go get everyone in the car. It's time to go. And he's getting all the kids loaded in the car and I'm in the bathroom putting on my makeup and doing my hair. And, and he's <laughs> laughing at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm getting ready to meet one of the most important people I'm ever going to meet. So I have to look good. And, you know, you go through, oh, for me, so I, went through I felt like such a schlub through pregnancy that I was like, no, I'm going to look beautiful for my birth. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> you know it was, and I, I i get it it was silly but at the same time it helped me feel good and 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 that that feeling good was part of putting me in a positive state of mind totally so when i got to relax and be at peace and and it was a completely different experience than all the other experiences i'd had before because you know being in just for me being in the hospital setting was not a positive place for me to be because mm -hmm. it did trigger negative things um but being in a birth center was like, you know, being in a hotel in a suite with a jacuzzi tub and, you know, they ordered food for us and it was great. And then two hours later, I was back home in my own bed with my family. So it was, you know, completely different, but better, better is better. How did you take that experience into your motherhood? Like, what was the difference? How you, you know... Um, experience these first say weeks or months after birth that can be a really hard time for a lot of women and in general and in, especially if they had a difficult birthing experience so having a really positive and beautiful birthing experience um, how did that make you feel oh no did you freeze uh, did you freeze Oh, here you are again. Could you hear me? Jackie? Oh, no. Okay. Hmm. Is this my recording or what's going on? Here you got, here you are again. <laughs> okay, sorry, did you hear what I, what I asked you? I only heard half of it, and then we cut off. So oh, sorry. Yeah. So I just wanted to to know um, uh, what was the difference of starting motherhood with a different birth experience. Um, usually, the first few months, the fourth trimester, right? These, the secret postpartum time can be a really rough time for some mamas, right? There's a lot of hormones going on, and you know, body changes and responsibility and all that stuff. So it's in general like a difficult time for women. Um, and especially if they had a dramatic or negative birth experience. So how did you feel having like a really beautiful and positive birth experience? Um, well, you know, I, I can compare the last two experiences because the, the one right before that, the baby in 2006, that was the negative hospital be back where I was on edge and I was fighting while I was in labor. And it's funny because that child is, um, he's, he's my, mm, what's the word? Um, I don't want to say troublemaker because he's not a troublemaker, but he's the most stubborn. He's the one who is, he's the rebellious one. He is the one who will question everything. And if any of my children are ever going to give me a heart attack, it's going to be that one because he's just, he's a wild child. And it's funny because part of me wonders if like, you know, he was getting some of my feisty energy when I was in birth. I was having to fight. And not really that he's a fighter. He's actually a really great kid. He does a lot for me, but he's got this personality. He's got this very strong-willed uh, personality. And, and none of his brothers have that. And he was the most traumatic of my birth experiences. And, uh, and he's the most strong-willed, the feistiest, the, uh, the protector, I guess. Um, uh, and my... And when I had him, it was a traumatic birth experience. I was very angry. I was depressed about how the whole thing went down. I was not, I was stressed out, like 
because the, they stressed me out when I was in labor. Totally. And after having a peaceful VBAC, having that experience was just, it was miserable. And for a while, I thought that was my last baby. So I was really depressed over, is that the last birth I'm going to have? And that's the memories I'm going to have with it. Mm. And I felt like it was harder for me to emotionally connect. And eventually I did, but it was harder for me to emotionally connect with the baby at first because I was hung up on the, the, how the birth went. And truth be told, that's, that's the truth about it. I was so depressed over how the birth was wow. that that was staying with me. And there was a part of me that said, I'm going to have another baby just to get a do-over. I was so upset about that birth. Like it, for months, that was, I was, I don't want to say obsessed, but I was upset, really upset about it. Um, emotionally upset about it. I cried over it. I was, and then to the last birth, that's when I made sure I told my, I told my mom and I told my husband at the beginning of that pregnancy, under no circumstance am I stepping foot into a hospital and I'm either going to have the baby alone, unassisted, or I'm going to find a midwife who will see me. Uh, because I was a VBAC, that had been the issue before. Uh, and that's why I was considering going unassisted. But after the hospital experience in 2006, there was no way, there was not a chance I was going to go back into a hospital. That wasn't going to happen. There was no convincing me of it. I was adamant, just nope, I'll go outside and have my baby in a bush before I'll go back in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, yeah, that, that definitely that, affected you. It affected me big time. And so it was after that that I understood. And it affected also your relationship with, with your kid, right? That is something that's really interesting that we got to also understand is like, if, you know, we're always like, oh, but be happy that you have a healthy baby, right? And it's like, well, but we totally, under, um, um, totally forget that if the mother actually has a really difficult experience where she is not, um, if, where she doesn't feel respected or empowered, then that will have an effect on the child as well. And it can have a long-term effect on the child if, you know, your depression um, hinders the bonding and the relationship. And so it was a very, very different experience with the other baby, uh, with the baby that came after him, because that was the birth that I'd always wanted. It was peaceful. It was in water with music and candlelight. Um, my ex-husband was in the tub with me. So it was really a beautiful, loving, the whole memory of it was just a loving experience um, that in the aftermath, I was able, even though I dealt with a little bit of postpartum, I dealt with some hormonal stuff, uh, with some postpartum stuff, but that was dealt with right away. I went to my midwife about it immediately. Um, we figured out what the problem was. We took care of it and it was done. Um, and, and so I only dealt with maybe two weeks of that because I immediately went to my midwife and said, something's not right. I don't feel right. Um, and we figured out what it is. So I was fine. Uh, but the bonding experience with that baby was so peaceful, so beautiful. Um, like he's, he's my, he's my mama's boy, uh, to this day. He's, you know, if he's doing something wrong, I don't even have to use words. I can just give him a look and he'll stop. We, and we've always had this kind of telepathic relationship. Um, I don't know. I don't have that with my other kids. So maybe it did have something to do with the birth or maybe it's just a soul connection. I don't know. I mean, I love all my kids equally, but there was a, maybe it had to do with the early bonding. I don't know. But yeah. Um, yeah I mean, if you're imagining that, cocktail of hormones that is being released in an undisturbed natural birth really from from the beginning and the onset of birth all the way till the, the placenta is born and the baby's latching on and then you know goes into the breastfeeding relationship that is something right. that's like really 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 powerful and that's for eons perfectly designed by nature right so it makes a lot of sense that we have this cocktail of hormone that really bonds us so strongly to that child that is then 100% dependent on us and then that we are 100% responsible for, right? So it makes a lot of sense that a nature would think that way and like figure it out that way. So who are we humans, right? To like think we can interrupt this stuff and, and just put some pain meds in us and, and, you know, slow things down and speed them up and, you know, it does affect 
um, the relationship for sure. I definitely have moms, clients of mine that had also two different experiences with epidurals that had first uh, first birth with an epidural and then the second birth a natural birth, Na not necessarily even at home, but maybe even at, in the hospital, but still like just without pain medication. And they said the recovery was so much better too. Something that a lot of women don't know is that they get really swollen legs and um, you know have a lot of edema because of the epidural and the IV fluids that they get and like all the physics physical stuff and then the spiritual and emotional stuff that comes on top. So um, it makes a lot of sense that it would influence the relationship with with your child as well. Absolutely. That's and that's what I really wanted to focus on because I knew my birth experiences were all so different. And with my film, with my first film, with Beautiful Births, that's really um, we cover a lot of different topics. But I yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because that's super exciting too. There's a whole movie about beautiful birth yeah. stories. How? The, tell me everything about it. So what I really wanted to focus on was, was that contrast of, um, and I found, I found a bunch of women, uh, I talked to my midwife and I said, when I was in film school, basically I said, I said, okay, we have to do an, I have an assignment to do um, a five minute documentary on any subject I want. And I was the leader of this little group. So I was like, okay guys, we're going to do birth. And I'm <laughs> And there was men in there as well in your, in your team? Yeah on the team and surprisingly they were all okay with it so it's amazing uh well they didn't have any better ideas because I, I had said if anyone has a different idea i'm open to it they were like no we'll do it we'll do your ideas so i was like all right cool i think i think a lot of men even if they don't admit it i think they have a curiosity about birth that's what i've seen with the reaction to my movie uh the people who were involved with helping me make it were college kids and they were definitely more intrigued and interested than grossed out. They didn't seem grossed out by it at all. They were very curious. Uh, and I, I was interested, I found that interesting in itself, just um, what is the male perspective on seeing birth in a different way mm. or seeing birth at all. Um, so that, that, was, that was cool. So I did this little five minute clip for class and I ended up using that as my uh, graduation portfolio actually. Um, and I, after I graduated, I uploaded it to YouTube and I thought, you know, because that's when my best friend Jackie in Ocala, she told me that she was doing birth photography and I thought, well, if I go through and make a full documentary, you know, would you want to work on this with me? And, and she immediately was yes. Um, so I put it up there and I was like, you know, let me see if people are even interested. Like if I'm going to take the time to make a full documentary, do people even want to hear what I have to say about the subject to begin with? So, uh, so I upload this little five minute clip and within two weeks it has 2000 hits. <gasps> and I'm, wow. People like, okay. So, so what did you show in the five minute clip? Now I'm all curious. Oh, the five, I'll send you a link to it for sure. Uh, right now it has 4.9 million views. <gasps> wow. Holy so moly. I was like, wow. Okay. I guess people are interested in this subject matter. Um, and then, you know, when it got 2 million is when I went through and made the, the feature, but, um, well, I was already, by the time the feature was done, it had 2 million. And then after that, it went up to 4.9. So I considered that a small success. Um, five minutes, I talked to my midwife and, um, and a, a, a woman that I know who also used the same birth center and, um, and I interviewed the two of them and I just put it together in a small five minute clip and, and it went viral and it ended up getting a lot of hits. So I went through and made the feature anyway. And I spoke to three different, I spoke to my midwife, uh, my best friend who's also not only a birth photographer, but she's also a birth assistant. She was working in a birth center at the time. And, uh, and I found three women who wanted to share their hospital birth stories and then their uh, midwife birth stories to compare the difference in OB care, versus midwife care and and because that's really what I found was it's the difference in prenatal care that really also makes a huge difference so when I was going to an OBGYN I would wait in the waiting room for 45 minutes for a five minute appointment when I went to see my midwife I didn't wait and if I did wait I waited for five minutes and had a 45 minute to an hour appointment and it was completely reversed um, when I went into my, during my last pregnancy, my dog had died. 
And I went into my midwife and crying and she held my hand and she cried with me. Mm. If I had gone with OBGYN, I don't think he would have had that same sympathetic reaction that she did. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it made well, a they, difference. You know, they, they do like, um, they work under a different model of care, right? I mean, midwives are working with the midwifery model of care, which means like they believe that birth is something inherently normal and natural, whereas doctors or trained surgeons, which OBGYNs are, you know, um, basically, they, you know, assume that it is only a physical exper um, uh, experience anyway, but mostly a medical experience where women have to be monitored and treated and go to the hospital right so it's like a, it's a whole different foundation that underlies both these care models right and that's that's what I wanted to focus on because when I was pregnant with my last baby Ricky Lake had come out with um, the business of being born mm -hmm. it great movie yeah it was a great movie and they they really uncovered so much. They opened up so many people's eyes to how the birthing system works in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was such a wonderful, it really opened my eyes. It opened up a lot of people's eyes that I knew. I thought it was such a wonderful film that I wanted to add to that. Um, and I wanted to do a film that covered what the midwifery model of care was. So my film is not, doesn't cover the same things theirs does, um, but it's very, I focus on the midwifery model of care. My midwife was the first person. So this was my fourth pregnancy. It took my fourth pregnancy for anybody in Florida or Indiana to ask me what my diet was. To talk about wow. Wow. Me about wow. That's mind blowing. Yeah. I was, you know, she sat down with me and, and she explained to me nutrition and uh, the brewer diet and we went through all we sat down and, and had two three four appointments just based on food nutrition what I should be eating versus what I was eating and never in my life have I ever had any any medical care professional take any interest in what I was eating and as a holistic health professional myself that's a huge area that when somebody comes in with any any presenting issue and hypnotherapy. Um, I'm also getting uh, certified in nutrition because that's something that I've been studying and I want to have the paper so that people will take me seriously when I give them the nutritional advice um, that I can be certified and in, in, in telling you that, uh, that you shouldn't be eating this and should be eating that instead. Um, my midwife really opened up my eyes to the fact that doctors don't care. They'll let you gain an extra 75 pounds that you don't need, that they'll let you get preeclampsia, they'll let you get sick, and then that's more money for them. My midwife, because if you get sick and you get gestational diabetes, guess what? She can't see you anymore. It's in her best interest to keep you healthy. If you get sick, the doctors get to put you on more medication, they get to do all these things that are going to charge you more money and put more money in their bank account, so it's in their best interest if you get sick or you need a C-section or something goes wrong with you or the baby, they're not going to come out and tell you that, but look at the facts and the facts are what's in their best interest, what's in your best interest and who cares about your best interest. And with my midwife, I felt like she genuinely cared about me. Yeah. My OB, I think he genuinely cared about getting out of there as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. So there was a huge difference in just being treated like a human. Totally. Yeah, I hear and see these stories over and over and I've seen it in, in with my own clients as a doula going, you know, um, going through hospital birth or going through home birth and seeing what the difference is in the care and it's, it's definitely, um, yeah, it's comparing apples and uh, pears. <laughs> They're not really comparable. It's a whole different, a whole different thing. So and you definitely... Yeah, and that's, that's what I really wanted to focus on with my film because I feel like a lot of women, and I mean, there were things I didn't even know until I was going through the process myself, but mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of women, they don't know that they have options. Right. So my, my goal with my film was not to tell people what they should do, but rather to open their, just like Ricky Lake's film opened up people's eyes, I wanted to open up people's eyes to other options mm -hmm. and 
you know, if you don't want an epidural, what about an aquadural? What about hypnotherapy? What about, you know, there are other things you can do to minimize your pain um, in labor and, and still have a, a really great experience. Because I think people fear pain more than anything else. And if you can remove the fear and also keep in mind that um, you're going to be in more pain if you're stressed, you're going to be in less pain if you're calm and relaxed. So that's, again, where breath work comes into play. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that there's so much that with, with my film, I wanted to cover as much as I could. And, of course, I couldn't cover everything. There's a lot of other really great films. Um, but when I was having my babies, there weren't really any. Um, in 2003, when I, when I had my first, my twins, Ricky Lake's documentary didn't exist. Um, I feel really great for women now, women like you who are pregnant now, you have so many resources available to you that weren't around when I was having my baby. So yeah. yeah, take advantage of them all, read them all, watch them all. That's, you know, I, I read and, and watched everything I could get my hands on. Totally. And there's now I believe we have that problem that we have too much different information out there, right? And it's really hard to sift, sift through all the misconceptions because not everyone has the same experience of what birth can be. So uh, we do still have a lot of fear mongering out there and a lot of, you know, still 99% of all women give birth in the hospital. It's literally just 1% of women that choose to have a home birth. And um, there's still so much work to do in America, at least, compared to other yeah. developed countries. You know, the, the rate is way more, um, way different, right? Women are kind of used to, to stay at home and have their baby at home. It's like, it's in the most normal thing. But in America, there is still so much to do. So thank you for putting all that work into making a movie about that and making a movie specifically about, you know, showing that side of midwifery care. And, you know, there's even in, you know, even if you have a birth outside the medical establishment, there's all kinds of different options, right? There is, as you said, the um, the CNM midwife, there is, you know, a traditional midwife, there's certified midwives, there's doulas, um, there's birth witnesses, there's women in birth unassisted in, in a free birth or wild birth. Um, there's all kinds of different ways of having your baby, but knowing that the hospital and drugs is not necessarily your only option, but you can also work with a hypnotherapist um, or you can inform yourself, you can work on your own state of mind, that's, yeah. um, that, that's an, amazing, um, an amazing thing you give to women to, to show all that. Thank you. So tell me a little bit more how we can see this film and who is, again, your partner that you're working with and um, how can we get it? How can we so get a hand on it? Website, uh, it's www.beautiful birthsdocumentary.com and everything is there um in fact the information about the book that we are currently working on is mm -hmm. right there at the top of the page uh, and then there's and the is that book. as well similar to the movie or does it have different contact content yeah, so it's gonna have it's gonna have different content it's gonna have more um we're gonna so the documentary has a lot of information about nutrition and and environment and things that i was discussing in the um, beautiful talk about birth and the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems um, so it's going to cover all of that information that is also in the film um, a little bit more in depth because within a book we can we can go a little more detailed and write a little bit more mm -hmm. it's going to also have my and her personal birth experiences in detail um, her name is Jackie Corpola she is a birth photographer Two Jackies, okay that's a little confusing <laughs> Oh, it, was so, it was so great in high school because we, we've been best friends since high school. So our friends used to just shout Jackie and both of us would turn around and, and <laughs> one friend who he does, he would do that all the time. And, and every single time we would, he would catch us every time he would get us and we would both turn around. he would just sit there and laugh because he thought it was funny. Um, yeah. So she ended up having, um, she has a really great birth story with her last baby, uh, she had a love child, and I'm going to let her write, like, all the details for the book, but basically they got a vasectomy reversal, and they weren't sure if it was going to work, and so she wasn't sure if this baby was going to, you know, come into the world, and sure enough, 
she did. And, and there's an amazing journey and an amazing story with that. So that will be included in the book as well. Um, so for if anyone thinks that, you know, they found the love of their life and their love of their life has a vasectomy and they want to have his baby, hope is not lost. You can oh, absolutely. That's so good to hear. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And so she's got an amazing story. Uh, we're working on the book version of that. And we're also um, accepting submissions from people who want to share their beautiful birth stories. Um, because she's a birth photographer and has so many images, we're reaching out to the women whose births that she's photographed as well and asking them if any of them would like to write their birth stories to share mm. in our book. So if, any, if anyone listening or watching wants to share a story, all the information is on the website of how to do it, where to send it. Um, and I think we're going to, I think we're extending that and I think we're going to be accepting submissions throughout the summer because there are a few people, there are a few people who want to write something and they keep emailing me asking for an extension. So I think we're going to extend that throughout the summer. Um, but yeah, so the movie is on that website uh, as well as if you click on the link that says hypnotherapy, that will take you to my, my hypnotherapy page if anybody is interested in learning more about how that can help with birth. Um, or hypnobirth, oh, hypnobirth. Um, I can work with clients worldwide because of Skype. Um, so, and I am, I am based in Southern California. So anyone who's local, um, you know, come see me and anyone who wants to book a session online, we can do that too. Um, and yeah, everything is at the beautiful births website. So if you just go there, there's also, um, a fear free childbirth book, which is free. It's an ebook. I was asked to be a contributing author to that. Um, so there's, yeah, there's all that fun stuff, free book. Wow, tons, tons of good stuff for mamas to get. And yeah. you know, I hope that you will be filled and busy all the way till next summer to, <laughs> with all the beautiful birth stories that are hopefully going to flood your inbox because hopefully this will, you know, this interview, this information that you gave us today and all the other wonderful women that work with women to release their fears and, you know, help them get all the wisdom and knowledge and confidence they need to get to create beautiful birth experiences. Um, you know, they will, they will come up more and more and you will have so much to make films about that you don't even know how to anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. I would love that. I would love to be so busy that it's a that it seems like a problem <laughs> i really that that's a good problem to have right <laughs> you know i i actually just connected uh with someone today that i really want to connect you with as well she is a mom and she had a home birth after seven cesarean sections wow i definitely yes. would love with her for sure yes so um i'm gonna have an interview with her too so i would love to connect you too she should be absolutely part of the book or absolutely part of your film because yeah. that is like crazy amazing and just wow right like nobody yeah. even thinks that this is possible so women are powerful birth belongs to women jackie blue filmmaker a beautiful births documentary check it out and see what you can learn there. Thank you so much for taking your time and for being passionate about, about beautiful birth stories. Thank you so much. Thank you ladies for joining us to this great interview. If you enjoyed this, please follow the Liberated Birth Movement on Facebook or subscribe to our channel. If you have more questions how to apply these ideas to your pregnancy and birth, Schedule a call and we'll get you clear on what you want and how to get it. Meetme.so forward slash liberated birth. Meetme.so forward slash liberated birth. Always remember, birth belongs to women.